Good morning, Robert. Good morning, Leonard. You have been researching tropical forests for more than three decades now. They probably look very different. What has changed, in your opinion? It's not that the forests look different. It's the way we look at the forest that is different. It's sort of the forest, uh, the old growth primary part has probably uh, been reduced uh, since the last 30 years. But there, there is more secondary forest. Uh, the, but, but it's more the, the look at the society as on forest that, that has changed. I mean, sort of when I started uh, my, my career, it was still much more uh, a look at the forest as producing timbers or goods. And then we have had an, evolve, an evolution in going more into ecosystem services, carbon storage later, but uh, water uh, biodiversity. So I, I would say that it's more the, the societal view and demands on forests that has changed that rather than the forest by themselves. So you have always had an interest in biodiversity and forests contain about 50% of the biodiversity today. Uh, what should be the priorities there for scientists and researchers? Well, I think the, uh, I think there are two two priorities. I think that one is we, we need to preserve as much as possible the, the the area of forest that is still intact that has been untouched. And untouched doesn't mean that there is nobody inside or no, people are not using it. But I mean, sort of, we, we should avoid uh, making an industrial uh, uh, use of this and try to keep them uh, uh, as much as possible. But more importantly, we should, re should recognize the role of uh, secondary forest or logover forest in terms of biodiversity. There is considerably more biodiversity in the logover forest than in oil palm plantation. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important because people have too often the tendency to consider this secondary or logover forest as degraded. Mm -hmm. And because they are degraded, you can convert them in uh, oil palm, uh, pasture or rubber plantation. I, I think that's very important because now this area of low covert secondary forest is bigger than the area of primary forest. And there has been a growing movement to take a more holistic approach to landscapes. Forests inevitably play a big part in that. What do you see as the role of forests in this new landscape approach? For the same reason that there has been a change in, in the way uh, society is looking at forests, uh, the way that uh, forest research uh, Forestry has become broader than what it used to be, and, and it's the same. It's part of the same train. I mean, people have realized, and C4 was instrumental in that. That a lot of the what so-called forestry problem are in fact not forestry problem. They are agricultural problem, or they are socio-economic problem, but not linked to forest itself. More, more to the other sector, and so that we had a whole. When I started in C4, uh, research program on underlying causes of deforestation. That, that was at the time pretty new. I mean, so going beyond the sort of the direct impact uh, of human activity. So I think that uh, forests are central in, in this whole issue of the landscape approach, but they are not the, the only part. So that means that we really look at the, the, the landscape as a, as a mosaic of various hues of various intensities and things where where forests play a big role, but where it is very important to consider also the interaction with the other sectors. Can you talk about how the C4 strategy and priorities have evolved over time since you've been here? C4 was created in 1993, and uh, when it was created, there were six people in the, in the organization. Uh, and the, the first, uh, but it was created with the idea of the main problem was not a technical problem. It was a policy and human problem. And so it was created with this idea of we are going to, to really look at influencing policies in terms of the way forests are managed. And then the first C4 strategy was in fact developed in 1996. And uh, this first strategy was mainly uh, uh, continuing the, this initial idea of looking at as forestry issues, but forestry in a sense of a relatively uh, narrow uh, perspective uh, but in terms of what are the policies that influence or do not influence forest, and we had the limitation at that time uh, looking at the humid tropics and for the dry tropics and the Myombos and Bezi area. So that was the first uh, strategy. Then, then it, it evolved and then in, in 2008 uh, there was a new strategy that was developed which uh, gave much, much more focus in terms of the climate change agenda, the, the importance of uh, mitigation and adaptation. 
uh, and uh, that already started broadening the, the concept of forestry. And then the new strategy, which is the one on 2016 to 2025, which is really putting forestry as centerpiece to achieve the sustainable development goals. So it, uh, we have moved to someone which was something like uh, different to the classical forestry research organization, but still very much focused on forest, on, on something which is much broader and an answer to the whole uh, sustainable, uh, sustainable development goal questions. And how has C4 made a, a difference, in your opinion? In many ways, I mean, it's sort of, we, we were probably the first to put this idea of extra sectoral uh, importance, uh, this initial work on the criterion indicator for sustainable forest management. We became the, the go-to place for this whole issue of forest and climate change. Uh, we are now making a, a good progress in having the non-forest sector considering the importance of forest for food security and nutrition, which was something that was not not really clear to the mind of the people before they they understood that forest uh, we, we, we provide uh, goods and services but they will they did not understand the importance of forest for uh, agriculture or, or, or the importance of, of forest for the livelihood of people what are your priorities for c4 going forward well my, my priorities i mean sort of you have a sort of the very short-term priorities is probably uh, ensuring that we have a good uh, launch of the GLF uh, in Bonn in, in December, uh, having a consultation with the staff to, to, to get their, their, their feeling on what, what should be done, what we need to be done. Uh, the, we have also a, a meeting of the Board of Trustees uh, in November, so these are the sort of the immediate priorities. My, my longer-term priority is that it's really to, to put C4 on a on a growth trajectory and uh, to, to make sure that we continue to uh, deliver the, the relevant research, capacity development, outreach and engagement uh, to, to, to change the way forest and forestry is perceived and to ultimately, uh, very, very, well, making the world a better place. And the Global Landscapes Forum, which is led by C4, has just received funding for the next five years by the government of Germany. How do you see this platform evolving and how can it make a difference? It's not like if it's starting now, it's, it's, it's the result of a long evolution from the forest day time uh, to the first uh, global, what we can call the first uh, avatar of the Global Landscape Forum. And then we are going to, to a, something which is more than uh, a, a very nice significant event if, if per year, but more I think uh, creating, a, creating a platform the overall goal of the new Global Landscape Forum, which is about reaching one billion, it's really about uh, having a transformational change in the way we conceive landscape and, and the use of the resources that are linked to the landscape. And you have had a very long career spanning many different continents. Um, I know it might be difficult to pinpoint one moment, but can you recall uh, a time as your proudest career moment as a scientist? For me, the most satisfying moment is when when we got our first uh, PhD uh, student successfully defending his PhD in uh, Congo, in the uh, Congo, in Kisangani. And that, that was really the, the result of a long, difficult effort and, and that was showing that it can be done. I mean, so you can have people doing good doctoral thesis uh, in Congo and uh, that there was capacity. That, that was probably in the, if I look at the period between 2005 and now, the one of my most, where I was the most proud uh, and, and the most happy. Also. Wonderful. Thank you so much.